And I don't know what you don't understand. It appears that prison is not teaching you what it should be teaching you. But if you come back out and you commit another offense or alleged to have committed another offense, I can request that it run concurrent, but whether or not it runs concurrent, that is completely up to parole. Let me ask you this. Have you already been revoked on your parole? No, ma'am. All right. Then if you have not been revoked on your parole, then I can say that these state cases will run concurrent with your parole. Uh, are we off the record? Yeah, we're, right. we're not uh, off the record. Honor, um, I have these cases. Uh, I, I owe the state from 2014, 25-year uh, sentence. And um, what I was asking as part of the plea bargain is uh, I'm willing to give the state the conviction if they'll run it concurrent. With oh, no, here's the thing. Th this is what I'm telling you. I want you to listen no, to me right. carefully. I can put in a, I can put in the order that the case will run concurrent with, with parole. I don't have any jurisdiction over that. I can't force parole to make their case run concurrently with ours. For example, if you had a federal case, I can say, oh, this time is going to run concurrent with whatever they're doing on federal, but I have no jurisdiction to force them to do that. Pro, uh, parole is completely different from probation, but I can put on the judgment that it's a run concurrent with your parole, but I have no jurisdiction to force them to do that. All I'm asking is if it runs concurrent with, with, with one of my case numbers, with my, with my case number that I... That I okay, here's the thing. It is a common case. It is a very common case. Here's the thing. Yes, ma'am. I know what you want. You know what you want? You want me to tell you no. that I can force these cases to run concurrently. That's what you want to hear from me. What I'm telling you is, and I want you to hear what I'm saying. Yes, I can write on a sheet of paper and say, your cases are to run concurrent with your parole. Guess what? If parole does not want their case to run concurrent with this, it does not have to. I don't think, I think it's more of the case. I want to run concurrent with my case. With my pit, with my with my active case, and not my parole. Uh, These two cases, if their agreement is there to run concurrently, they will be running concurrently. So, if you have something that is on parole, I have no jurisdiction to force it to run concurrently. That's what I'm telling you. As in, I, I didn't comprehend that part. Hmm? I apologize. I didn't comprehend that part. Yes, I can't force them to do it. I can put in in our judgment that these cases are going to run concurrent with your parole, but I can't force parole to run anything concurrent with these cases. So what happens to, I mean, I'm a little lost right now. What would happen with each case individually? Individually, if like you were going to plead one, on- One I saw 15 years and then it, I'm getting an, a, a 10 with it. If you were to plea on both of these cases, I can order that these two cases will run concurrent and they will run concurrent. But if you want these two cases, if you're going to plead to these two cases to run concurrent with your parole, I have no jurisdiction over what parole can do. I can put it in judgment and write down these two cases are to run concurrent with your parole. But you know what parole could do? Parole could say, yes, we're revoking him and his parole is not running concurrent. Well, I'm, I, I'm going back to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice regardless. You know what I mean? I haven't been revoked because we're waiting on the outcome of these cases. All right, so here's the thing. What I want you to do, we're going to bring you back at 1.30 and I want you to in internalize what I'm saying, not what you no, want. No, you know, yes, ma'am, I understand. I'm just trying to comprehend and break it down how... I can't break it down any further. So... I can't make the parole board run these cases concurrent with your parole. If I put in the motion or I put in the judgment, these cases are to run concurrent with parole, parole could, could, could still say... Uh, thank you so much, Judge Boyd. We're not running it concurrent. Even even if they're Bear County cases? Yes. Even if they're Bear County cases. Parole is something completely separate. I have no jurisdiction over the parole authorities. What if you can run it concurrent with, with the cases themselves and not parole? I can say it's running concurrent, but again, parole can still say we're not running it concurrently. So here's the thing. I know what you want. And we're going to keep saying this same thing. Well, can, and it's not, I, my answer is not going to change. Yes, so come back at 1.30. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, everyone. We're taking our break. All right. Mr. Saldana, you're here for a plea deadline date. So did you have a chance to internalize what I was telling you? Yes, ma'am. All right. So uh, do you wish to have a jury trial? Yes, ma'am. 
All right, Ms. Ferguson, uh, state, are you all going to be proceeding on the possession one to four of the injury to child? Um, the injury. All right. So, how long is this trial? How long is this trial? Sorry. All right. So, Ms. Ferguson, if we could set this for a jury trial first thing. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, good morning. Frankie Sandoval on behalf of Mr. Saldana. Mm -hmm. um, Your Honor, um, I, have, I have some time this afternoon. Would it be possible for Mr. Saldana to um, and I did to confer just a little bit longer? Sure. We'll, we'll get the jury trial date, but we have to make sure that um, we are all on the same page as it were. Okay, sure. Most definitely. I appreciate it, Judge. Thank you. Right. Um, Your Honor, can I, can I speak on the record? What do you want to say? Um, I would like to object to, to the indictment and the evidence they used for the indictment. And um, I'm also uh, reserving all my rights. Uh, for, Sardana, why are we talking? All right, so let me explain something to you, Mr. Sadanya. I understand what you're saying. I'm internalizing what you're saying. Yes, ma'am. But this is what I'm going to say, and I want you to internalize what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. If you need open heart surgery, are you following me with this scenario? Yes, ma'am. And the doctor tells you, hey, you need open heart surgery, and I'm going to do the open heart surgery. Do you go to the library, read a book, and tell the doctor, hey, I know you're doing an open heart surgery on me, and this is the scalpel you should be using, and this is the stitch you should be using, and this is the way you should perform that surgery? No, ma'am. See, and people think that attorneys, people think that attorneys just talk, oh, I can do that. All they're doing is talking, but behind their talking comes a, not a, a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. And everybody thinks that they can do that. So, for example, with regards to an objection to the indictment or objection to the evidence used for the indictment, that's something that your attorney will be taking care of if legally there's a reason for it to be. If he determines that legally there's no grounds for it, then he's not going to go forward with it. That's the way it works. So your attorney wants to have a chance to talk with you. I'll let you speak with him in the box. And what date, Ms. Ferguson? All right. Your jury trial is going to be July 2nd. If you want to do something with this case, you can do something with it today. Or either what's going to happen is you're going to be set for jury trial on July 2nd. Yes, ma'am. And I'm sorry, Honor, just uh, for advanced information, um, I have a conflict on the 3rd. I'm a prosecutor for a local municipality. And okay. We have court on the 3rd. Oh, we'll, work, we'll work around it. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right. So just have a seat in the box. But your jury trial date is going to be uh, July 2nd. Yes, ma'am. All right, court is calling 2024 CR 2324, State of Texas versus Valentin Saldana. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Marjorie Hilma for the state. Defense. Your Honor, good afternoon. Frankie Sandoval on behalf of Mr. Saldana. Are you Mr. Saldana? Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Saldana, did you review the document entitled True Bill of Indictment with your attorney, and did you understand it? No. All right, you need to speak up. No. All right, counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Your Honor, we are waiving the habitual the enhancement paragraph, and we're proceeding on the underlying audits. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, did you review the document entitled Court Admonishments and Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with injury to a child, bodily injury, intentionally, annoyingly? That's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, you're moving very slow with your answers. All right, do I need to speak up for you? I think everybody can hear me pretty clearly. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm sorry, what? Yes, ma'am. Are you understanding everything? Yes, ma'am. All right. Did you understand? If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you, and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? 
Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He has, Judge. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? In my opinion, yes, Judge. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saldana, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? No, ma'am. All right. Do you want to go to a jury trial? I'm not satisfied with the way I'm being tried, uh, represented. No, ma'am. I don't want to go to trial. All right. All right. So this is your attorney. Uh, this is what I know. Uh, we can go off the record. Here's the thing. An attorney will tell you this is what the state is offering you. You can either accept it or reject it. This is a case that the state has made the um, decision to waive the habit habitual. If we were proceeding on the habitual, you know what your minimum is? Right. What? 25. And so you're saying you're not satisfied with your attorney when the state is not proceeding on the habitual. I'm like, not, I'm like. What does that mean? All right. All right, we're back on the record. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Did you review the plea bargain page with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at 10 years in the prison. There are no applications. The state is taking in consideration county court cause number 722472-2024-CR3082. There's an affirmative finding of family violence and there's to be no contact with the complainant. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition? No. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to be designated as primary custodial parent? Yes, Did you understand that to be your plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense, is that the plea? It is, Your Honor. State, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Did you review the paragraph entitled Waiver of Appeal Paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal, the only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? There have not, Your Honor. Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No state, any evidence? Your Honor, the state offers state's exhibit number one and all attachments. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Did you review the document entitled Waiver and Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments, and the court will review the same. After reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? In the interest of justice, that would be a request, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, Mr. Slodanya presents himself before you, accepting responsibility for the matter before you. Um, as um, the court may be aware in reviewing his record. Excuse me, just one second. Mr. Cox, Mr. Cox, yes. if y'all can move down to the other end, we're on the record. That's okay. All right, we're back on the record. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. As the court uh, is aware, um, Mr. Saldana is uh, currently on parole on a previous case. Uh, he would respectfully request, and I make this request on his behalf, that um, although we understand and he understands not binding, we would ask that um, the sentence that will be imposed today by this honorable court uh, run concurrently with whatever actions uh, parole takes on his uh, former case. All right, and what are the parole case numbers? Uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Saldana, if I may have a moment, Your Honor. Sure. The burglary of the habitation, Your Honor, case out of the 226 District Court, 
case number 2014 CR 10282B as in boy. Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor, that's the, that's the uh, open parole matter that, again, Mr. Saldani is aware it's not binding, but he would respectfully request this court make a notation that it's the court's desire that it run concurrent. All right, this court is going to do. As previously stated, the court is finding you guilty. The court will sentence you to 10 years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. This will run concurrent with 2014 CR 10282B. Take in consideration county court cause number 722472, 2024 CR 3082. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with Mallory, M-A-L-E-R-I-E, -E, Saldana, Jaden Saldana, J-A-Y-D-E-N, and Irene Portellas. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing from either side? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. Not on behalf of Mr. Saldana, Your Honor. We appreciate the courtesy extended by the court and the state in allowing us to um, address this matter this afternoon. All right. And then um, did you review the document entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal because this is an affirmative finding of family violence. And also because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Uh, those documents go to the defense attorney. All right, we can go off the record. Your minimum was 25 years in the prison. You understand? Your attorney was able to get you less than the 25 years. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you don't understand. It appears that prison is not teaching you what it should be teaching you. But if you come back out and you commit another offense or alleged to have committed another offense, potentially based upon whatever offense that may be, you're looking at a minimum of 25 years. Do you understand? Mm. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Saldana, thank you. All right. Thank you. Joseph Balboa, if you'll come down. Oh, what are we doing with this? I think we started it so it's last time we were here. Mm -hmm. And uh think the safe risk to it. and I don't know whether they were gonna oh. so do y'all have the exhibits with the, the exhibits are with the other court reporter correct yes ma'am okay all righty so the court found violation of condition number one true all right is that correct yes ma'am <laughs> I see. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go on the record in 2022 CR. Just one moment before we do that. Council, do you have a, a trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal? You may have turned it in last time, but it's not in the file. So if you could do that for me. All right, we're on the record. And 2022 CR 0423, State of Texas versus Joseph Balboa. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Quinn Wilkins Cox for the defendant. And are you Mr. Balboa? Yes, sir, my name. All right, the court did have a, cha have a chance to review the exhibits that were entered in the contested hearing uh, from April 30th. Uh, the defendant had pled true, I'm sorry, not true to violation of condition number one. Evidence was presented at as it relates to violation of condition number one, and that was states exhibits one, two, three, four, five, uh, and the court found a uh, violation of condition number one true. And we're now here uh, for sentencing. Uh, state, what are you requesting? You are asking for 15 years in prison um, based on uh, the underlying is a, it's a second degree felony, it's a drug case, um, but I know you've seen the, uh, the court summary uh, uh, the defendant had opportunities uh, on probation and, and he got something for it in exchange for his plea, right? So 
um, in exchange for pleading to deferred, um, uh, he's, he's looking at the full range here. Uh, but he didn't take advantage of that opportunity while he's on deferred, Your Honor. Uh, he wasn't reporting. Uh, didn't do a whole lot when he was on that community supervision, Your Honor. Uh, then he, he did assault that officer. Uh, I know you, you heard the testimony and you saw the video and you saw the pictures. So that's why we're asking for 15 minutes, Your Honor. All right. Defense? No, I have a mate. The, uh, I know the court saw the video. And the testimony, I know the court found too, but even the officer, as he testified, indicated that uh, my client was always moving away from him. Uh, there was some suggestion that my client would say maybe he'd be the aggressor. Now, there may have been some type of resisting, but uh, in terms of actually assaulting the officer, I don't think that was clear on, on, on the video. I don't even think by preponderance of the evidence. The um, both parties, my client uh, was injured. He went to the hospital. I think the officers have some pictures too at the hospital. All right. I did see on the video your client punched the officer, and it was his first day on the job, I think. The, the witness who testified, yes, he was brand new. Hmm. And I don't, I don't think, no, no. I, I didn't see it that way. I, I saw there was some movement, mm -hmm. but in terms of a punch, though my client's name is Balboa, I can see that, but the punching part, I um, think it was more backing up, trying to create distance between him and the officer. Uh, and I think on the uh, video, it was indicated that my client was basically just trying to uh, close his house down and he was going to leave peacefully, but it never came to that. So he got, you know, he, he got hurt too. I mean, they, some things were done. We, I just feel that judge on this type of situation, I think 15 years, like the state uh, is asking for based on the underlying if he's, if he's revoked what would you be asking for if he was revoked i would my first preference would be to continue him on and and, and basically he she, she just wants work he wants to provide for his family uh and he would absolutely love another opportunity to to uh, improve himself improve himself but if i think if the coach is going to revoke him and give him a felony record uh my suggestion would be two years. All right. So here's the thing, Mr. Babala. You entered a plea bargain agreement, and that plea bargain agreement was for punishments to be assessed at six years. Uh, the state was silent on your application for deferred adjudication, but they were recommending community supervision. And I'm sure I probably told you, if I grant your application for deferred adjudication, you're subject to the full range of punishment. All right. And so do you remember my saying that to you? Yes, sir. All right. And may I, may I say something about well, here's the thing. Do, do you want to be subject to cross-examination? Oh, that means that the state would have a chance to question you. All right. So probation. Has he done anything on probation? I was doing the parenting class. I missed one day and that's when I have to restart it. All right. She states he's done his TAP evaluation. Well, I, I, have to, I would do the class and I missed one day. All right. So here's the thing. If you all whisper and have a conversation, the court reporter okay. is trying to pick it up and put it in the record. So I'll, I'll just like the, the urge that sometimes probation records uh, are not as complete. Client indicates that he has taught the parenting class. Mm -hmm. Then when they miss class, they make him solve it. Mm -hmm. All right. The court is going to find you guilty. The court is going to grant the motion, revoke you. The court is going to sentence you to seven years. I'm going to give you credit for any time served. And I'll ask for the therapeutic community. Is there anything else? No, nothing. All right. So you have a limited right to appeal. And that right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you were in deferred adjudication. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a weapon or ammunition, you need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. 
All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing. I think you know deep down in your heart, I gave you a chance to be on deferred adjudication. And all you had to do was report, do some classes. And if I ordered parenting classes, it's because you had a child. You saw yourself on the video, right? I mean, you saw yourself on the body, the officer's body cam. That's right, but I have to go on my own as well, but I'm not gonna- I'm sorry, what? Nothing, all right, it's irrelevant. All right, because they were coming to serve a warrant because what you have a warrant out this court. So you said they were there for a, a welfare check, so. Yeah, I mean, a welfare check plus, guess what? When they went to go do a welfare check, according to the officer's testimony, they found out that you had a, uh, warrant and that warrant was not reporting for your probation in this case. You understand? So guess what? If you would have been reporting in probation, they probably would have never had to do a welfare check. You know why? Because if you would have had an issue with mental health or anything else, you could have told probation, probation would have taken care of it. But at the very least, they would have just been there potentially for a welfare check. But now it, it, it spirals to this you understand all right what's happening with this other case i'd like to talk to mr cox about it judge all right all right just have a seat in the box